Lord, for the overwhelming love that you've shown to us and are showing to us daily. Thank you that without fear we can speak your name anywhere we go because you are with us and for us. And if you are for us, who can be against us? Papa, I thank you that you love us with an everlasting love. Thank you, Father. Lord, I ask you to have your way tonight. Lord, as I step aside and let the Holy Spirit minister tonight, Thank you, Lord. It's your service. It's your church, Jesus. Thank you for making our candlestick bright brighter, shine brighter. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for revival and for your kingdom to be made known. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. What a privilege. I think it's a great honor for Pastor to allow me to come minister tonight. It's such a blessing. Um, I pray that I do honor to his word and to you guys who are here on a Wednesday night. Thank you. Thank you for being present. I think the Lord has something for you. Uh, Y'all be seated. I'm sorry. Y'all be seated unless you want to just throw tomatoes or something there. (laughs) Thank you, Donna, for your kind words. I do love these kids. And I'd have to say if I do need to ever take care of you, I'd invite Dorothy too. (laughs) She's a good caregiver, too. Um, so I, I'm trying to lay my, my three-point message tonight, God's will to heal, and uh, it's number one. And the first step in healing, and Donna mentioned my experience in healing school, and just real quickly, let me tell you, I've seen God do some really neat things. He surprises me, never fails to surprise me. And sometimes they're real unique, and I never had it happen again. One time as I prayed for a lady who had a heart issue, I touched her and like it was electricity, and it scared me. <laughs> so I pulled my hand away, and she said, wow, what was that? So I touched her again, same thing. Well, she told me she cleaned her house for 24 hours afterward. You've heard it said that we don't have anything, but we are vessels, and it's like we plug in to an electric outlet, and the Holy Spirit flows through us. So I've seen lots of things. One time, a lady came down the aisle, and she was in a sling. And I love that lady. And I said, oh, what's wrong? And she said, well, I'm going to have to have on my collarbone. And I said, oh, no, I don't want you to have to go through that. And I laid hands on her, and she felt her bone move. You know, I can't tell you that that happens every time, no. It was just God's love was extended, because faith works through love. Right? The Bible says that. And I say that. And one time another lady came in. I guess I'm looking for people or something to, when they come in to make sure they're okay. But um, she said she was to have gallbladder surgery. Am I cutting out a little bit? Is that me or is that y'all? Anyway, um, I said, really? Well, you know, there's a lot of gifts that work in the body of Christ. And often... Uh, there's a boldness that comes upon you. And maybe that special faith, I don't really know, maybe it's one of the gifts of healings. But I prayed for that lady, took her in the room. I remember when it was and where I was because the anointing was there. And we hadn't even carpeted that office where Louise is now. And she didn't have to have gallbladder surgery. So, hey, who knows what God has for you tonight? Because often the word has a pounding effect. And you may not even know it. Sometimes people would come up for healing, and I'd laugh because I knew they were already healed. And I'd say, are you in pain? Well, I was. I never laid hands on them or anything, but the Word can do that for you. Jeremiah says, it's not my Word like fire, like a hammer that shatters rock. I love that scripture. And, of course, David in the Psalms said, I praise your Word. So, The word tonight is about healing. And the first step that I think we have to do is find out what God says. And we have to get harmony in what God says, inside and outside. That's healing. When you have harmony on the inside and on the outside, you're whole. And some of us have broken things in our lives as children, as adults. Some of us weren't covered by our fathers. And uh, we had things happen to us that shouldn't have. Maybe our innocence was awakened too early. Or maybe we've been abused in some way. I was married before. I think y'all know Pastor was adopted by Jerry. Bless his heart. And um, 
I was in an abusive marriage. My first Christmas with him, I nearly lost a tooth. But, you know, sometimes we stay in those relationships too long because we're looking for God to take care of it or us to feel worthy enough to leave, maybe. Maybe that's what it is. I'm not sure, but that means a lot to me. So let's look at God's will to heal first. I want to take you to some Old Testament things first because there's God. The Old Testament is glorious, majestic book. I love the Old Testament, love the New Testament. I love it all. In uh, Numbers 6, verse, uh, starting with verse 23, I think the words are on the screen for you. The Lord said to Moses, Tell Aaron and his sons, this is how you are to bless the Israelites. Say to them... The Lord bless you and keep you. Now in Hebrew, that is um, three words, and it means physical blessings. Think about that. The Lord bless you. Keep you. I like to be kept. I don't know about y'all. And then the next line, the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. And that is five Hebrew words that means the blessings of emotional Mental wholeness. And then, may the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Now, I use Adonai, but I was trying to read this because Adonai is what we say for the Yahweh. The Jews don't pronounce that name. They may say hallelujah, part of his name, <laughs> because it's a holy name. And so they substitute the word anytime you see that. Adonai means my Lord. And it's substituted for his name. Um, the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. That's seven Hebrew words that brings you the blessing of complete wholeness. Nothing missing, nothing broken. Completeness in every way. And so he goes on to say, God goes on to say, So put my name on the Israelites and I will bless them. Now God is showing us in this his relationship with the Israelites. That he, his name is repeated three times. And three times is like holy, 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 for example. Um, here's an example. A chariot is rolling wrong and it falls into a pit of tar. Tar? Tar? <laughs> tar. <laughs> anyway, I'm from West Texas. It's tar. And if it's a deep pit, it's pit pit. But if it's a really, really, really deep pit, you can't measure, it's a pit, pit, pit. So when we say holy, 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 you can't measure God's separateness from us and his wonderful. But, okay, three times his name is, and that's to invoke his name. And when that happens, it was remind the Israelites of his character, of his faithfulness, and also of his covenant with the people. You know, God works through covenant. That's why Jesus came, and we have the new covenant in his blood. Remember that life is in the blood. Without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness of sins. And often the Bible treats sin and sickness together. Sometimes the root of a sickness is sin. Sometimes it's just the world we live in. Sometimes it's the people around us that have caused things. But for grins, I put a little rabbit trail for you. Since we're talking about how the Hebrew blessed the people, um, in those days, there's in Song of Solomon, I'll just read it to you. Gazing through the window, he peers through the lattice with raised hands in a Star Trek format. <laughs> the priest blesses the people through five lattices. I know this is kind of... So they would say, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And the Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you wholeness. And this is though God is blessing the people as, the, as he looks through the lattice at the lovers in the Song of Solomon. Okay, too much. <laughs> so, um, he says in the Old Testament, Exodus 15, I am the Lord, your healer. I am the Lord that healeth thee. I will put none of the diseases. If you'll obey me, if you'll follow me, I won't allow anything on you, like the Egyptians. You know, they had the plagues. Um, also, in the New Testament, Jesus said, when he was... Uh, appeared to the disciples on the sea. They'd been fishing, and they came ashore. 
And uh, at the fireside, he turned to Peter and he said, Do you love me? And he said, Lord, you know I love you. And he said, Tend my sheep. And this went on three times. Peter said, You know I love you. And he said, Care for my sheep. Well, who are the sheep? I'll explain those to you. Ezekiel 34, 16 describes a lost sheep. This is the God who tends the sheep. He's the one we sing that song everybody loves. He leaves the 99 to come after me. That's a good shepherd. Ezekiel 34, 16. I will search for the lost and bring back the sheep, the strays. I will bind up the injured and strengthen the weak. The Lord wants to bind up the injured, strengthen the weak. These are the lost people. Often, some of us get lost. Uh, we pull away from the church and from the church family because we're hurt. And someone needs to bind our, rooms and the good, our wounds. The good news is, God said in Jeremiah, I will restore you to health. I will heal your wounds. When God says, I will, he will. He said that before he brought the Israelites out of Egypt. He said that several times. I will deliver you. I will bring you into the promised land. When God says, I will, he will. Um, Y'all know Psalm 103. I'm just thinking of things that in the New Testament, going to the New Testament, Psalm 103, he forgives all my iniquities. He heals all my diseases. He redeems me from the pit, crowns me with loving kindness, renews my youth like the eagles. Say that about me. He renews Shirley's youth like the eagles. <laughs> I need that. So we fast forward to the New Testament, and you see that Jesus healed the sick. I mean, Acts 10.38 says how he went about doing good, healing all who were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. How God anointed him, and God was with him. So, I think I'm missing a verse here, but also in Matthew it says he went around preaching, teaching, and healing. It says that a couple of places. He went around preaching, teaching, and healing. He was preaching about the kingdom, about making the kingdom real in these people's lives. And... Um, I'm full of the word tonight. I'm sorry I'm on a little bit of overflow, but that happens when you've been studying. Sometimes it just wants to come out. And I'll yield to the Holy Spirit for that. In John 5, Jesus said, uh, I only do what I see my Father doing. So, and he was going about healing. So what's the Father's showing him? It must be the Father's will to heal. All through the Old Testament, there's all kinds of types and shadows of him healing. And then for Jesus to say that, preaching, teaching, and healing, and I only do what I see him doing, it's God's will. Everybody agree? Who disagrees it's God's will that you be whole? I like to use the term wholeness because sometimes healing is about that inner man getting fixed. I sent y'all a picture of a Crack vessel. Do y'all have that? Did that get in there, Sherry? Do you know? There it is. Look at this broken cup. And, you know, the, the Japanese honor by when something breaks, they make it better than it was before. See that picture how it has the gold in it? It's resplendent now with the gold. And that's what God does. When he restores, he makes us better than we were before, and it's glorious. That's God's restoration going on. And that's what I think about when I think about brokenness. Often, I tell people, if God allows something to touch you, then he's going to bring a redemptive purpose from it. You can trust him. Is he trustworthy? You know, the only real authoritative thing that God ever said to me, I mean authoritative, the boom. You know, we have our still, quiet voice sometimes where God speaks to us. But when it goes all through you, and he said, will you trust me? You just want to hit the floor and say, yes, sir. Pastors told you often when you hear, you know right where you were and right what you were doing. And with me, it was about money at the time. So you'd think I would take a clue, huh? <laughs> so New Testament we're going to. Jesus commanded the disciples to hear. I'm in heal. I'm in Luke 9-2. He sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. Now, when he proclaimed the kingdom, he demonstrated the kingdom because they were healed. You know, one time he cast a devil out of a guy, and he said, 
You know, if I cast this out with the finger of God, the kingdom has come near you. So the finger of God meaning the Spirit of God. And then in Luke, Luke 10, he sent out 70 disciples to proclaim healing, to heal the sick, to proclaim the kingdom, excuse me, and heal the sick. So in this age, we're called disciples. We're learners. We're going to be learning our whole life. If you ever think you have it, you don't. Just dig in deeper. We're to press on and know the Lord, for he comes like the dawn. Love that song. So God provided ways for us to be healed. I, I can't even go into all the ways. But um, for one of them, 1 Corinthians 12, gifts of healings. Pastor talked about that on Sunday. Working of miracles, special faith, and sometimes discerning of spirits. Because well, sometimes we need to know what kind of spirit is operating in someone. Sometimes you can see it. So um, when you, do, as a church, and we're, we're called to lay hands on the sick, aren't we? Jesus said in Matthew 28, you know, go out, do it. All authority has been given to me in heaven and earth. And when he sent the disciples out, that's a picture of us too. We're disciples. So I pray for people in Walmart. I pray for people in the checkout line. Any opportunity I can, I pray for people. I try to be careful because sometimes I'm working and I have to say I'm done, but can I pray for you? <laughs> but... Uh, if you look for opportunities, God will give you opportunities to pray for the sick. And all it takes is you knowing the word. James, you know, James says, if any be sick among you, call for the elders. Let them pray over you, anoint you with oil. Oil, there you go, with tar and oil again. And the prayer of faith will restore the one who is sick, and the, and the Lord will raise him up. And if he confesses any sins to one another, he'll be forgiven. There again, you see, sin and sickness sometimes intertwine because Jesus took care of it all. Did he not? Yeah. Hallelujah. So, all these ways to be healed. You know, the first thing the disciples did after they were cornered about preaching the name of Jesus at the Gate Beautiful, they saw this invalid and they said, Silver and gold have I none, but what I have I give to you in the name of Jesus. Stand up. And I can just picture Peter, Peter yanking on him. Because <laughs> he had to act on his faith too. And his feet and legs were strengthened. So um, I hope you see miracles when you start doing that. Get bold out there, folks. Pray for people. They need it. So his will to heal. Jesus commanded the disciples to heal. He healed, of course. And next, number three, we have authority. For authority, I want to take you two places. First in Genesis. Uh, Genesis 5.1. In the day God created man, he made him in his likeness. The likeness of God. And then Genesis 1.27, similar verse. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. We are in the, made in the image and likeness of God. Sometimes when I feel weak in faith, and I feel like, Lord, I need help. I say this first. I am created in the image and likeness of God. Genesis 1.28, God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. You know, God's never caught off guard. He's saying the snake is coming. Get your authority in place. If you haven't had to take your authority, you will. And you learn what your, where your authority lies in the name of Jesus. You get a credit card with his name. <laughs> Power of attorney to use it. So get a boldness about you, I say. Because God backs you up. And then, of course, I use Colossians 3.10. Put on the new self who is being renewed to a true knowledge according to the image of the one who created him. Now, you know the fall. You know what happened when they didn't do that snake. You know, Adam fell, and a lot of curse came upon the earth, and that's part of where sickness comes from. Some of it straight from the devil. Some of it originated with that time when the curse came upon the earth. You know, one of the things that happened to my husband, so you know, uh, in March when he passed away, he developed pneumonia. Then he got staff in the hospital. A little debate over where it came from, but he was in the hospital three times during February and March. And the staff got the best of him. 
It's resistant, you know, so it was, y'all know the name of it. Rita's not here right now, but she could tell us. It's MRSA or something like that, MRSA. But it's resistant to penicillin and antibiotics, and he sure had a lot slammed at him. Uh, and one of the things that Jerry experienced was an attack of the enemy really strong. Even though we stood in faith, we, Bracken and I, Pastor Bracken and I knew it was time for him to go on home. I mean, he had too much. His lungs were scarred. And unless God gave us a huge miracle and a reversal, which Jerry had had miracles before, we knew it was time for him to go. And when he said he was afraid of dying, I, I laughed. I said, Jerry, do you have the Holy Spirit? He said, yes. I said, is God inside of you then? Yes. Well, do you think God's going to hell? You know, if you've got the Holy Spirit on the inside, you're going to heaven. So um, I got into all that to say there is a curse in the world. This staff keeps, what do they call it, morphing or changing and getting harder to handle. I even read where 50% of the hospitals in England have it. So sorry about that rabbit trail, folks. My favorite verse, y'all, I have so many favorites. I'm sorry when I say this is my favorite. I mean it. But then I have another favorite. <laughs> Behold, I give you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means harm you. John 10, something. All the power of the enemy. That's pretty encompassing, isn't it? I give you authority. Okay. You know, uh, when we're ordained, you can trace that back to Jesus. Jesus laid hands on Peter. Peter laid hand on the disciples, and everywhere they went, they laid hands. And so you can trace the anointing and the transfer. The anointing is a tangible substance that can permeate, can remain, and can be restored, even renewed. Sometimes when you fast and pray, you know, something that wasn't as strong in you will come back. And I like to tell people when you're healed, and you know the anointing was present, which it is tonight, you can go around singing that song, the anointing is working in me. The anointing is working in me. So I don't know what we'll do tonight, whether we'll lay hands on you or those of you want that. Some of you may already be, feel like you're healed. Um, it happens, folks. When the anointing's present, you can just reach out sometimes and get it right where you are and say, I, I got it now, I know, and begin to walk in it. God will meet you where your faith is. You say, well, I'm weak in faith. I don't know that much about healing. He'll meet you. He's good, isn't he? We sing a lot of songs about his goodness. He confirms his word. I, I always say it's, um, church can't flow without the supernatural. We're supernatural body. And we have to realize supernatural things are at work in the church and in you because we are the church as a whole. So, that's not ooey-ah stuff, y'all. That's truth. It's a mystery. Paul talked about the church being a mystery. And we as a body make up the church. So I believe that it's unscriptural to preach the word and it not be confirmed with signs following. That's a pretty bold statement. Because if I speak the word, God confirms it with signs following. You're looking at me, Kit, like, you believe that? Yeah. So when we preach a word on healing, it should be confirmed. Hebrews, there's an example. I think I put the scripture there. Hebrews 2, 3. How will we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? After it was the first spoken through the Lord, it was confirmed to us by those who heard, God also testifying with them by signs, wonders, and various miracles, and gifts of the Holy Spirit according to his own will. Wow. So, maybe the reason I see miracles and some of you haven't is because I expect them. You know, I like the way that translation Pastor gave on Sunday. Um, faith, is a, faith is the foundation for my confident expectation. So, we should be bold about these things. Um, remember, though, when you are healed, sometimes there's a snake out there. He's going to try to steal it. So I like to think of this Christian life 
as a victory walk. Every day you get an opportunity to be a victor. Things are going to come at you. It's just life. You know, just like sorrow. Um, it was hard for me to come to church for a couple of weeks. And when I finally came on Easter, I hid. I came in late. I left early. And the reason was, it's grief. It's real. We have emotions. Sometimes it takes a while for our mind and emotions to catch up. Our spirit's strong, but it makes you want to run sometimes. But um, I believe that Pastor allowed me to come minister tonight as a step of faith that the Holy Spirit and the anointing that I carry would override any loss that I feel. Does that make sense? Did I say it well? So the thief wants to steal, kill, and destroy, right? It's the word. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I came that I may give you life and life more abundantly. And, you know, another verse, you know, Jesus said, um, in this world you're going to have tribulation, but take courage. I've overcome the world. So when you're aligned with the Spirit of God, when you know He's at work in your life, and you've received Him, there's, there's always more of God. There's always more. You can expect great things from God. You can expect to walk in the miraculous. You can expect to live a life of faith. And often, what I tell people, when I pray for people, rise up, spirit man, be strong. Your spirit man's got to get strong. Where is it in Proverbs? I don't remember. It says, if you faint in the day of, Calamity, there wasn't much to you to begin with. In the day of adversity. That's the message, maybe. There wasn't much to you to begin with. So we have to keep our spirit man built up. Because uh, things are going to come at us. Each of us, even today, there may be some of you trying to overcome something. Maybe it's as simple as a headache. Maybe it's as simple as a lot of headaches. But the good news is, God's given us a way to deal with these things through gifts that each other have, okay? I don't know each of your gifts. Maybe you say, I flow in those things. But the, but the issue is you can apply the word regardless in faith. There's so many words on victory. I think one of my other favorites is... <laughs> As many as are the promises of God in Jesus, they are yes and amen. So find the promise on healing. Find where it says you can do these things and have these things. Um, you know, God sometimes give you a gives you a word on something. It doesn't mean you don't have to pray about it and take it. It's not just going to show up someday on your doorstep. might be. God's good, okay? But mostly, you have to possess it. Don't you? I heard Nancy Dufresne talk about God telling her he was going to give her that house. Marie Edworth Wooder's house or something. And who was it? Belonged to some evangelist. And she, but she would go sit beside that house and pray every day. Until she got it. Until it worked out. And it was a miracle. Miracles. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory, right? That's a scripture. He always leads us in triumph. And manifest through us the fragrant aroma of Christ. Amen. Psalm 147.3 says, He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. So um, I want to close with something. Where did I do with it? Here it is. I was refreshing my mind on something today. And I came across some things I'd written um, Winston Churchill gave a speech during World War II that is often quoted, and it uses that biblical three-time thing I mentioned to you, the pit, 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 and holy, holy, holy. Um, never give in. Never, 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 never. In nothing great or small, large or petty, never get in, give in, except to convictions of honor and good sense. Never yield to force. Sometimes the devil comes with oppression. It's a force. Never yield to that. Yield to the apparently, never yield to the apparently overwhelming might of the enemy. Sometimes we feel like we're undone. We feel like, well, you finally did it, devil. You finally got me. No. <laughs> no. 
You rise up, spirit man, and you possess all that God says you can have. So as the Lord said to me, will you trust me? I think he says that to all of us. So get a vision for your healing. You know, pastor often quotes, without a vision, the people perish. Or without a vision, the people run amok. So your vision becomes your hope. And the Bible says hope does not disappoint. So begin, if you're, if you're in a faith fight, begin your for confession. Pastor's been wonderful series lately on confession. Confess what you see in the Word, not what you see physically. Don't be moved by what you see, feel, or hear. Be moved by what God says. Smith Wigglesworth was a famous guy who raised 23 people from the dead. And he said, one word of God can change a nation. So sometimes one word of God can change you. If it's going to change a nation, it's a person at a time, right? So let's believe for that. Constantly keep a new picture before you. I love when pastor teaches on vision because I believe strongly in vision. You have to have that before you. So Holy Spirit, we thank you. Lord, we put the word out as you gave it. And I thank you, Lord, for the miracles and the blessings for the people tonight. I thank you that you put your name on them, your character, your goodness, your faithfulness. I thank you for that. In Jesus' name. Now, I just ask you to check yourself. Did any of you come in with pain tonight? Who did? Who came in with pain? You did? Is it gone? What? It's almost? It's almost gone? Well, come on up here and we'll finish it. I'm telling you, it happens. Anybody else come up with pain tonight? Come in with pain, with a sickness, with an illness, with an infection. Somebody have an infection? Maybe that's just strong in me because of what happened to Jerry recently, but I think somebody has been dealing with an infection. Is that you, dear? Yeah. What you got? I don't know. I flew in from Phoenix, and it's like hot over there, and then I'm in, in cold and hot, and so I, I don't know if it's allergies or... Is that a airplane travel, huh? <laughs> All right. God loves you, honey. Let me give you a hug. Lord, thank you for this dear lady. Thank you, Lord, for taking care of this right now. In Jesus' name, Lord, you said... She said you'd already gone to work in her body, so we ask you just to finish that work in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the anointing. Now, I tell people to open their eyes and shut their mouth because you can't give and receive at the same time. <laughs> okay, thank you, Lord. Thank you for doing your work tonight. You're our healer. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for healing this lady. Clear it all up, Lord. She's been miserable with the infection. Thank you for healing her right now in Jesus' name. So walk away whole and healed and happy. Happy. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. So if any of you need hands laid on you, come on up, y'all. Don't be bashful. Healing is the dinner bell. Ooh, I nearly needed it. <laughs> Okay. Well, maybe that was both of y'all. Right. Yeah. Lord, thank you for Sherry. Thank you, Lord. She's a woman of God, and she knows you, Lord, and she loves you, Jesus. And she sought you. So, Lord, I just thank you. Lord, not that any of us deserve anything. Lord, we don't deserve anything. You're just gracious and good. I just hold her up to you, Lord, for the value she is to church, to Donna, to the people. So I thank you. Okay, I'm going to lay hands on you, Sherry, and I thank you. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. Clear it up, Father. Thank you. Sinuses, you be whole in Jesus' name. Right now, you be whole in Jesus' name. I have authority over pain, and I tell you, pain, go. You know I have authority. Go in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Keep up the good work, Sherry. That's what I hear. Keep up the good work. Thank you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anybody else? Don't be bashful. I'm safe. I won't do anything weird. Maybe. <laughs> okay. 
Thank you very much for coming. Thank you for listening. You were all such a good group. You pulled on me. Some of you looked at me a little weird, but that's okay. Thank you. Donna, you have anything else? Well, everybody, let's go get some chili frito pie. And if you did need healing but you didn't come up, just go home and thank God for it, okay? Sometimes people are bashful. God is good.